don't know, man. I like. Creepy. I've met that guy in person a couple times because yeah. he's like in Texas. Like he's in Texas, and I've met him at the the station I work for, the Buzz, our our, our festival, Buzz Fest. And did he provide the pizza? Uh, he did provide the pizza, and quite frankly, when you meet him in person, he looks totally normal. And I, I'm not sure if he has had terrible plastic surgery because you meet him in person, and you don't think like, oh, 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 oh bot- botch job. You, you don't like look at him and and think that. Maybe he's had like for this season. Maybe he went and had some nips and tucks that went horribly wrong. But like he's in Houston, and Houston has like some of the best plastic surgeons in the world. Like it has uh, apparently more breast. The, there are more breast implants per capita in Houston than anywhere else um, in the country. Ooh. You know that Jared Leto guy? Yeah. Uh, Jordan Catalano have, from My So Called Life. Does he have breast implants? Uh, no, but he, um, you know, like he's one of those guys who's like beating the crap out of his 40s yet still looks like he's 25. And, uh, you know, and he's had like, I, I suppose what they would call good plastic surgery. He probably started maintaining an awful long time ago. So it's not like some hideous, oh my God, what did you do? You look like a burn victim sort of thing. But apparently he goes to Houston for all his nips and or tucks as well. That is the rumor that I've heard. Hmm. Where does he buy his eyeliner? I don't know. He probably just steals it from your sister's makeup cabinet. <laughs> what else? A Minnesota man admitted that he put his semen in a female oh. co-worker's coffee over twice, more than a number of times. <laughs> oh, put semen in a female co-worker's coffee. What a jerk. Wait for it. Uh, and there it uh, is. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that one always takes a second. A good one. Okay, please continue. An asteroid passed dangerously close to the Earth yesterday. It was not the supermoon. Mm. Couldn't see. I, I, I couldn't see. Um, I, I couldn't see the asteroid through the cloud, specifically the eye cloud. Still checking out J Law's cans. <laughs> what else? Uh, and finally, President Obama says he regrets playing a round of golf after publicly addressing the beheading of an American journalist. Right, let's go shoot eighteen. <laughs> that was a halfway decent Obama. That was good. Oh uh, look! <laughs> oh my god! Uh, thinking about a beheading really messes with your swing. I don't think I have it. Thinking of thinking about a beheading really messes uh, with your swing. Nah, I, I can't. I've never need, claimed to be able to do uhs, impersonation. You need yeah. awe and look, look, uh, look. You need to start everything with look. And the, the American look. people say, say that a couple of times in there. Oh, uh, look. Yeah. Nah. Oh, uh, look. <laughs> Seattle is considering replacing Columbus Day with Indigenous People Day. The, the vote to rename Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day in Seattle has been postponed so that the mayor and other elected officials can hold a signing ceremony next month to mark the change. Hmm. What do you make of this? Or on iHeartRadio, keyword Foo Fighters. Go ahead, favorite the show, and enjoy AD on the go. iHeartRadio presents AD. So, spiritually speaking, where do you land? Do you have a faith? Are you serious about that faith? Christian? Catholic? Jew? Atheist? Agnostic? Uh, Where do you land spiritually? Buddhist? Hindu? Muslim? Here's the thing. I I would describe myself as uh, spiritually searching. Not necessarily all that hard, but open to possibility. I would also... I would also classify myself as someone who has the utmost of respect for other people's spirituality and faith. 
it's an incredibly valuable thing. And you can't go through life dismissing it. <laughs> it kind of controls the world. And uh, here's the thing. You might feel like the fact that religion controls the world is a hideously awful thing. I kind of sort of do. Uh, the whole not being able to separate church and state uh, successfully in this country is, uh, if I had to pick one problem that I, I think would... Uh, if we could if we could successfully separate church and state in America, I think it would make both the church and the state that much more of a legitimate proposition. I think you'd be able to hold your politicians accountable in a way that was oh, something we haven't experienced in my lifetime in this country. And well, here's the thing. Whatever side of the fence you fall down on, whether you are a religious person that prays or whether you're an atheist that believes religion is a damaging thing. Andrew W.K., I like to party, party till you puke, let's get a party going, that guy, he did something that I consider to be an absolute game changer in the world of religion and spirituality, and uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Pretty sure he's an atheist, too, but he so perfectly summed up, I think, the idea of prayer and a higher power in a letter to someone that wrote to him. Well, almost grieving. It's powerful stuff, and we'll get into it a little later in the show. Right now, though, Seattle has considered replacing Columbus Day with Indigenous People Day. Columbus Day has been celebrated all across America for, I don't know, as long as I can remember, decades. But the Human Rights Commission has pushed for a name change. The proposal is being sponsored by council members Bruce Harrell and Shama Swant. And I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Uh, supporters of the change. They gathered this past Tuesday, just gone by on the steps of City Hall in Seattle and said, make this right for everyone so we can celebrate life instead of genocide. A lot of people say the council is being too politically correct and wasting time. Other people say it's about time to celebrate a group of people who were treated poorly by some of the first European settlers. Do you know the history of Columbus Day? Columbus Day officially became a federal holiday in the United States in 1937. Changing the name to Indigenous Peoples Day is expected to pass the Seattle City Council early next month. We are, you know, coming up on October. Columbus Day is uh, October 12th. When people are asked to describe Columbus Day or Christopher Columbus, most people will tell you two things. Christopher Columbus, brave explorer, went to Isabella and Ferdinand and got his uh, his trailblazing voyage funded back in the day. Despite terrible odds, he sailed across the Atlantic, proved the earth was round. He was a tireless, courageous hero. He discovered the new world. This is what a lot of people kind of think about uh about Christopher Columbus, who in 1492 sailed the ocean blue. Here's the thing, though. In 1491, no one thought that the Earth was flat. See, the notion that everyone thought the Earth was flat, yeah, now that's uh, sort of a myth that was conjured up in the 18th century. And uh, misguided historians started uh, parroting and passing down information from other misguided historians, which uh, there was a trickle-down effect. School teachers started teaching it, and the idea sort of stuck. Columbus was very well aware of the fact that the Earth was round. The Queen of Spain, who he financed his voyage from, uh, she knew the Earth was round. Pretty much anyone with any kind of an education knew that the Earth was round. The ancient Greeks proved it like 2,000 years before Columbus was even born. At no point did he think he was going to sail off the edge of the map. Uh, Anyways, he discovered the new world. (laughs) This legend kind of glosses conveniently over the fact that natives living in the new world got there like 14,000 years before Columbus discovered it, and Leif Erikson, a Viking, found the new world 500 years before Columbus ever even set sail. But I mean, if you want to get into the semantics of the whole situation with Columbus... When he arrived in America, um, he, he wasn't looking for America. 
He was uh, trying to find a quicker passage, a quicker trade route to Asia. But, um, yeah, he, he didn't discover the Americas, but he did sort of like, he did start a new era with relation to the Americas. Here's what went down between Columbus and the natives who occupied what is known as the Bahamas. In 1493, Columbus's initial voyage to the New World, he discovered the New World, or at least got the credit for discovering the New World, but it wasn't especially fruitful. He knew he was onto something and that he could kind of make a name from it, but he remained focused on gold. He was after the cheddar, yo. <laughs> He really was. He wasn't so much in the business of discovering new land masses. But the thing is, these natives in the Bahamas, they wore gold jewelry that uh, Columbus immediately eyeballed, wrote down in his journal, and um, was kind of fixed on the source of the gold that these natives were were wearing. (laughs) <laughs> Forget that better trade route to Asia that he was after. Columbus was in it for the ducats. Lots and lots of ducats. Sometimes you just know your time. You're longing for that shining sun. You walk these streets most every day. You're waiting to get washed away. Stop, but I'll stop time to run away and make you mine. Fascinating subjects, interesting talk, and boobs and fart jokes. AD on iHeartRadio. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Talking that mess, better act like you know. Oh, let's go tonight. Walk away, punk, yeah, bitch. That's right, I know this. You're nothing but a punk, bitch. You're nothing but a punk, bitch. So walk away, walk away. If you're just joining us, Seattle is considering replacing Columbus Day with Indigenous People Day. And uh, we were kind of having a look at uh, Columbus's Columbus's adventures, retracing his footsteps and uh, the the routes he sailed back in the day to kind of figure out exactly uh, what was going on and whether it was worth changing a holiday that we've all experienced in our lifetime. Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. A brave explorer who, despite terrible odds, sailed across the Atlantic, proved the earth was round. Not true. Everybody knew the uh, earth was not flat. Everyone educated. Isabella, who financed his trip, yeah, she was aware that he was in no danger of sailing off the edge of the map. He discovered the new world. He was aiming for a faster trade route to Asia. Um, the discovery of this new landmass, he knew it was onto something, but that's not really what he cared about. See, Columbus's initial voyage to the New World was really just about making money, and he thought he could make that off of finding a better trade route to Asia. But then he sort of landed... Uh, he was in the Bahamas in 1493. He was in the, in the Bahamas in 1493 and he came across, well, he came across the natives of the Bahamas and he noticed they were wearing gold jewelry and he was like, oh, I know that's that. Yeah. Okay. Now we're on to something. This whole trip might not have been a waste after all. He saw this gold jewelry in, uh, 1493. When the Santa Maria was shipwrecked, these natives that he uh, he saw wearing the gold jewelry, he uh, they they were really helpful to him. They worked for hours to rescue his ship. They saved crew. They saved cargo. Uh, he described them in his diary as healthy and generous and hospitable people. And uh, he, he decided to return home, taking twenty five of those natives with him. Of those twenty five, only seven made it. And uh, this kindness that he, <laughs> this kindness that he noted in his diary, he also saw it as a great inn. He said, "I could conquer the whole of them with fifty men and govern them as I pleased." Anyways, 
Columbus sold the queen on the idea of a new world.